Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. So first off, I just wanted to apologize for not being around too much, not making a video in about three weeks. And this is due to a couple things. A lot of you guys already know, I am a college student and I had finals coming up. So that is uh, where I kind of took one week to really study hard and get my tests done. The second week is when I got home for winter break and I wanted to spend time with my family. And then the third week I had my girlfriend over and she does not live where I live, so I spent the entire week with her, and I wanted to focus on time with her rather than time spent editing a video. So that's where I've been, just kind of with family and friends for that entire time period, and kind of getting tests and other obligations done before kind of my hobby, which is this. So the reason for today's video is that I'm back home and back at the pond, and so basically I wanted to take a look and check on the turtles and give you guys an update on how they're doing. But it turns out that while I was checking on them, uh, two out of the three of them had a fungus that I recognized. So I wanted to take you guys step by step exactly how I identified the cause of the fungus, began treatment, and took measures to prevent anything like this from happening again. Because as you guys know, diamondback terrapins are prone to skin issues if they're not kept in brackish water. They can still develop them in brackish water, it's just a bit less likely given the salt content. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how I diagnosed the issue, found out what was wrong, and went ahead to prevent that from happening and treated it. So let's get right into it. Oh, 59. Yeah, look at that. She just came up and went back down for a breath of air. Really, 59. Jeez. Neat. So basically, I was just over there. The window's right there. Looking out. And that big white female named Flipper by my parents came on up for a breath of air. And it's really interesting because it just rained a whole lot. And last night I checked the water temperature. It was 43 degrees. 43 degrees. And that is way too cold for them to come up. But with these recent rains, here she comes. Hi. Do you see how slowly she moves? Oh, and there's, I believe, I forget his name. My parents know the name right behind her. As these temperatures are increasing, they will go in and out of brumation. You can see she's nice and big and healthy, and their shadow as well. They're all coming up, thinking it's springtime. Let's see if we can't actually grab them and bring them over. But take a take a little bit of a health check, a look at them. Come on up, friends. That reaction time was much quicker than anything I would have expected, to be perfectly honest. Hi! Easy. Easy. Come on up. You see, they move very slowly in the winter time. She's probably looking for some food. Now, that boy looks like he's got something wrong with his eye. So, we're going to pull him out. So we just want to take a look at how they're doing. So you can see she's a little bit fat, a little hefty, and a couple nicks and bruises, but nothing terrible. I'm going to let her take a breath and go back down. This boy come over here. Get this man. Oh, I want to take a good look at what's going on with him. Oh, that's uh, that looks like it's healed. Those look like wounds. Got mosquitoes coming after me. Alright, 
pop him back in. Let him go. Uh, mosquitoes being bothersome. The turtles have a bit of a little fungus type thing, which is uh, super common. It happens during brumation, which is basically turtle hibernation when it gets cold out. And so I'm getting them out before it really starts to spread and taking care of it. The reason this is occurring is because this is fresh water. Uh, I thought I would be able to um, let it continue as a freshwater ecosystem and hopefully they would be okay. But salt takes care of basically all skin problems. So I'm going to pull them out, raise the temperature, raise the temperature, uh, let them slowly warm up inside, let that get to room temperature. That'll be about 70 degrees. Um, and then I'm going to treat them with some fungicide and I'm going to put a whole bunch of rock salt, convert this to a brackish water system and put them back in to go back down for the winter because when this water gets dirty, it, it kind of is a bigger impact when it's fresh water than when it's brackish water. So they're in a little green tube down here. I'm gonna see if I can't kind of knock and get them out. I can't exactly see anything and they're probably not gonna be too happy. Uh, the water, I can show you, folks. Yesterday it was 60 degrees and they came out. Today, after mixing it, it's 55. It was 50 actually just before um, when I checked it, but I guess because it's churning, it, the temperature is kind of rising. So let's see if we can't wake them up, get them out, and if this takes too long, I'll just kind of speed this all up. Come on out, friends. Let's see if I can get the entire tube. Oh. I wish I could just get in there. Come on, friends. Here we go, here we go. Right. Oh. Ooh. That water is what I would like to call brisk. So we're gonna pull out the tube so they have nowhere to go. And you normally definitely don't wanna bother them during brumation, but this is necessary for their health. We got one, at least I felt them. You know, this is a pain in the butt. It's all right. You're good, you're good. Don't worry about it. Like this. And they have it. They've actually been brumating for quite a while now. It's probably been a couple weeks. Interestingly enough, before these problems arise. Where you fellas at? Oh, that feels like a lot of debris. Excellent. Is that a turtle in there? Oh, we got one. <laughs> okay. So come check. We're yeah, gonna see who this out. is. Okay, Hi, this is Shadow, uh, aptly named by my parents. So if we take a look, folks. So Shadow actually is faring the best, it seems, from this fungus. You can see his back legs are fine, but take a look right here on his shell. Wait, no. No. You're good. He has some old shell rot, but, and some snails. Shadow's fine. Okay, excellent. Good job, buddy. Wow, that's interesting, because he's actually the only subspecies. Um, he's terrapin piliata, which means that they're more um, from the Mississippi area. He's the only one not native to this area, and he's the one who doesn't have any fungus hi, issues. Hi, baby. He's an absolute... Messy your face. Oh, hi! That's... This is really good. That's really, really good that he's doing okay. Yeah. So we're just going to put him in here. That's awesome. That's good news. It means it hasn't spread to him yet. It means only two of them are, are, are just getting the beginning cases of um, that issue. It's a small fungus. I'll show you exactly how I treat it, exactly what I'm going to do. Let's see if we can't find the other two. Oh. Oh, let's see. 
Get the key, get you. Nah, got out. Keep searching. Yep, here's one. Oh, come here, love. Woo! So, we're gonna have a look. Oh, we got both of them. So, here, I forget this boy's name. He was named by my parents. Do you see that right by his eye? That is a little bit of the beginning stages of the fungus. And you can see on top of his head, right by his eye as well, that's also beginning. So, folks, we're taking care of this before it gets bad. Now, the worst case is on Flipper. Poor baby. We can look. Do you see all this? All this is just some fungus that's beginning, just starting out right in here, in here. Um, she's an absolute sweetheart, which is why we are going to make sure that these fellas get all fixed up. Hi. I'm sorry, love. Um, have a look at this shell. As we can see, some shell issues might be starting to form. That's just something under um, her scoots, maybe a little bit of stuck shed. Brackish water is also going to help with this. Um, that helps kind of solidify underneath the shell and get those scoops to pop off. Pop them in here. And that is gonna do it. We're gonna bring them inside and we'll continue this process. So on the first day that I brought the terrapins inside, I brought them inside in a bin of their old and cold pond water and I let the temperature naturally rise to room temperature in order to slowly bring them out of brumation. Okay folks, so here I am just draining the water. You can kind of see it. For some reason it's kind of showing up green, but there's the pump down there. That's their little tube. I am draining the water right now. I just had to take the waterfall filter and move it over there and just flip it upside down. There's all the water in the yard, but that'll drain out by tomorrow. But here's the pond. That's normally where the waterfall filter goes. Here's a bunch of dead water hyacinth that I've pulled out. And here is where the water level's at. So I think I'm going to turn off the pump for right now, head on inside and finish this process tomorrow while the turtles are warming up in a little bit of this old water inside in a bucket. On day three, I emptied the water and this is where I began dry docking them, which is basically when you dry out your turtles and keep a heat lamp overhead in order to keep them nice and warm. This was done in order to try to make the fungus kind of dry up and crust off and kind of get them nice and dry because funguses usually need water in order to survive. Let's quickly go turn the hose off. It's getting very full. It smells like fresh pond. So, nice and clear now, especially comparatively to before. It's very full, as you can see over on that side. Let's check our temperature, shall we? Oh, my lanta. 61. That's great. That's quite warm. Considering the outside temperature, it's 58. Water temp is 61. That will probably go down later. After cleaning out the bottom, I have determined that... Excuse me, crows. I have determined that the cause of the fungus is what I believe to be decaying material. I had water hyacinth in this pond, which took off in the spring, as well as some guppies. And the guppy population and water hyacinth population took off in the spring and summer. But those two uh, species of flora and fauna do not fare well in the cold. And therefore, when they all died off, uh, the water quality got a little bit too poor for the terrapins liking. And so they developed some skin issues because terrapins in fresh water can be kept without issue. I've never had a skin problem before, as long as you keep the water very nice and clean. 
So here I applied the antifungal cream in humans. It is used to treat athlete's foot, but pretty much any antifungal cream will work. And I put that on them and allowed them to dry off because otherwise if I put the cream on and put them in water, well, it would pretty much just wash off. So I continued the dry docking process and continuously applied the cream about every 24 hours, sometimes twice a day. You can see that the fungus is already beginning to look better. Look at this, beautiful clear water. This is also really gonna help me out when I need to pull the turtles out and check on them because I'm going to need to check on them pretty much every day, maybe every two or three days, just so that way I don't disturb them too much. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a temperature reading on the water as well. 50. And remember how yesterday it was, I think 60, 62, something like that. All it took was one night for it to plummet. So let's check on how the kitties are warming up. That boy right there, you can see above his eye, it is white, which means that is scarring tissue. That's where that little bit of fungus was on her. And you can see it is no longer orange. It's kind of crusty because these guys, these guys have been dry docked for about 24 hours now. And big old flipper here is shedding. You can see this is a non-shed scoot and this is a shed scoot. You can tell which one is which, hello. I do need to lift her up to check though, just to be safe. Okay, you can see how it's really clearing up now. See how it's crusty? That's excellent. That's really, really a good sign. Hold on, love. Definitely a good sign. So I'm going to probably put them in some salt water for the rest of the day and see if I can get them back outside probably tomorrow or within the next two days. So here Flipper was beginning to shed her scoots. We could visibly see that they were beginning to peel off and just to kind of help her out, we went ahead and began peeling the scoots that were easy to come off. We started taking those off. Now this does not hurt my terrapin at all and I don't usually recommend that you do this, but we were being very gentle and anywhere that our nails could fit under, clearly that is an area where the scoots would have naturally come off. We're just kind of helping little Flipper out here in this process. This is good for terrapins and natural and usually happens when you dry dock them because sometimes they don't like to dry off completely themselves, but when they do, usually their scoots will crust and come off. It's very windy, however, I have rock salt here to help with the fungus, turn it slightly, slightly brackish. And water temps are 56, not bad, not bad. So I should hopefully be able to get them out today. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop these leaves and get this salt in. The salinity is about 1.04-ish. So we are going to try to get those numbers up a little bit to about 1.08. So right now I'm basically doing what people do with bags of fish in order to temperature acclimate them. I am putting the turtles in a tub of water that's about 65 degrees and putting them in the pond kind of like this so that way the water temperatures will equalize, slowly kind of cooling them down that way uh, I don't shock them. And this water temperature in the pond is about 57 degrees or so, maybe 56. And so this is just basically to slowly kind of cool them down, not temperature um, shock them because that can cause a couple problems and it's not really good for them. So I understand that this whole process may seem kind of uh, not nice to the terrapins, maybe a little brutal. However, it is completely necessary to ensure their long-term health just a little bit of discomfort now over a couple days is well worth what could be $100 in medical bills and uh, what could be a lifetime of pain for these little fellas. So as you can see, water temperature 64 here, 
56 here. It's almost 10 degrees. Once we get it within about three or two or three degrees, I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in. Or if they manage to escape on their own, that's fine as well. Okay, folks, so I'm coming out here. The turtles look like they're just about ready to get out of here. So let's go ahead and check the temps. 59.9, so it's about 60. 56, 57. 6.8 and 59.4 that's about enough for me of a difference let's go ahead and see if we can release these fellas so before I put them in the pond I'm gonna go ahead and grab them one by one and show you guys once and for all how they're doing this fella had his eye issue as you can see that scarred over very very beautifully and he had a fungus on the other eye completely gone just about all the way healed up. You can barely, you can't even see it anymore, actually. I'm gonna let him take one last breath of air before going off. So he's scooting, scooting on over. Next one is Shadow, aptly named by my parents. He didn't have anything at all going uh, any issues, any fungus at all. I just treated him um, basically as a precautionary measure. Let him go. There he goes. And finally, the one that's salt down there, by the way, that's just slowly dissolving out. We're going to get Flipper, who had the worst case of fungus. But you can see it's pretty much healed up. That's a little wound there that's healing up. It's a tiny amount there. It's just about all gone. So if I see any more, I'm going to pull her out and um, just treat her from now on. So I'm going to give them a couple days, check up on them just about every day, and see how they do. So here we can see everyone's not too happy. Uh, about their little experience. However, they both seem to think it's almost springtime, but in a couple days, once they see how that temperatures are not gonna go back up, they're gonna go into that cave and begin their brumation state again. You can see the two of them down there. I gave them a very tiny amount of food two days ago that they've passed, just because their metabolisms were raised. You can see they're swimming just fine. They're able to get oxygen if they need. That little one is not mating. He's just following her around like usual. He was doing this when the water was 40 degrees as well. So that's just kind of what he does. Let's check the salinity of the water as well. Let's take a look. There we go, about 1.05. Maybe a little less than that. Not bad at all. Uh, I may want to increase that actually a little bit, but for right now, that's gonna do just fine. So I'm gonna keep my eye on these fellas and let them go back to sleep. So on this cloudy and windy fall day, I wanted to thank you all so much for watching. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more of my videos, check out my channel in the description below. And if you want to keep updated with any of my other videos, hit the subscribe button and the little bell thingy so you get notified when I come out with a new video. So thank you again all so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.